Hey, welcome back, you guys. This is Trucking Business Freedom. I'm Jay at Auto Transport Intel. And once a month on Fridays, uh, we've added a new show. We're going live at 1 p.m. Eastern, noon Central, to talk about trucking news, articles, and information just for one hour. So uh, this is a panel show, and my uh, my co-host is Mark at Trucking Answers. Let's bring up the uh, we get the panel up here. This is just the third episode of this show, so still working out some of the kinks, but uh, here we go. We got uh, Mark at Trucking Answers. Uh, Mark has a show. He goes live every Monday. You guys know Mark. And, oh, let me bring up my video, too, also. And then I also got Ty from CTS. He's a transport business coach. And we've also got Steve Stefan Harz. He's a driver and trainer. So I want you know I want to thank you guys. Listen, you guys know that I kind of put this together last minute. Um, even though we do go live once a month, um, I had uh, I had a couple guests, you know, cancel and change on me, and I'm still I'm trying to get my uh, my video to come up here. Hang on one second, you guys. All right, hang on. Okay, I got to switch the camera there. I still have to do camera switching that I don't prefer the way it that Zoom won't interact with my camera while I've got my integrated camera going. But all right, so we're popping up here. All right, so um, this is the new show for folks that are looking for hard news in trucking and not just uh, some guys standing around looking at each other talking. Um, that's what we're trying to do here. So Who's got a news story that they want to lead with? I've got I've got a couple news stories I picked out. Um, in fact, I want to say this: Stefan has a really interesting um, was following up on information on that security guard story. Stefan, what? Why don't you lead for us? What, what's going on with that story? Sure. Yeah. So that story, I actually reached out on Twisted Tracker to the driver that was attacked. And I was able to watch a hour long video and I had just uploaded that video to my YouTube channel. And the real short of it is the driver was just going to back to his truck because he was going to pick up groceries and the security wanted to, you know, look at his truck, open up the side boxes and everything. I mean, when I was OTR, I had to do that a few times, so that's really not a big deal. But the guy was just being way over barren. The guy had his hands in his pocket, and the security guard way over freaked out. He's like, all right, screw this. I'm leaving. I don't need your load. And the security guard decided to attack him, saying, no, you can't leave anywhere until we tell you to. And, you know, pushed him up against the truck and started attacking the guy, you know, as you can see in the video. I mean, it's, it's pathetic. Well, where's the? Where can I find this story? Where do you think I can find it? Uh, you can find it on Twisted Trucker on Facebook. Uh, you can also find it on my YouTube channel. Like I said, I just uploaded the uh, the video and all that information, so it's there. Let's go look at that. Um, let's see here. So your your YouTube channel, you're Stefan Harz on YouTube, right? Yep, just my name. All right, so I'm going to go to your YouTube channel, Stefan Harz. And where did this happen at? Okay, here it is. Truck driver attacked by guards at Metro Foods? Yep, Metro Foods. Where's that at? Uh, I, I, I looked, but I don't remember exactly where it's, off, where it's at offhand. Uh, I have the whole address in the police report. Okay. I, decided not to post the police report because it has the uh, you know the security guards names in there along with the uh, driver's name and I didn't want that all that information being out there unless he wanted that out yeah there. hey Ty Mark had you guys heard of this story oh it's been all over the news okay so this this is national news well it's all over the trucking news oh tru like okay trucking yeah. news oh but it doesn't make it to national news no, it's just trucking. They don't care about that. <laughs> uh, there's actually a news story, I think it was Fox. I don't remember exactly who, but uh, a news organization did do a story on it in the local 
uh, news. Okay, so there's the there's the security guards. The the guy mm -hmm. pulls up to the fence, whatever, right? What what tell for you know? Help me out because I work in car hauling. Where is he right now? He's at he's just at a check in point at a. Yeah, he's actually outside of the facility. He's not even inside the facility. He's sitting in the driveway at the security guard um, with an empty trailer to okay. pick up his load. All right, so he's scheduled. I mean, he showed up for his appointment, right? Yep. Okay, so he shows up for his appointment, and then the security guard just, you know, normal day. What's your name? What are you doing here? Yeah, the, the only thing that was kind of interesting is this is not a high security area, but the security company wanted him to open up his side bags. Uh, they searched, uh, they searched, you know, the whole truck, you know, the hood, this, that, and everything else. You know, for a food pickup, that's a little odd. I mean, it'd be different if he was picking up U.S. mail or military gear or something like that. I mean, the, the security at this place seems to be really... Uh, advance all right so there he, okay now that's his wife gets out of the truck right yeah okay uh, right after this video clip that i did uh i posted some of the injuries the photos i mean these these security guards did a number on this poor couple so okay here he is yeah he's opening up they want to see under the hood they want to see in the mm -hmm. boxes right yeah and that's, and, is that you normal know, you can see for a food pickup, no, not really. I mean, I haul food every day of the week. Um, you know, but you can see the guy, you know, is not complaining. He's doing what he's told to do. Uh, it's just, you know, at some point, the security guard just way overreacts. I mean, the guy's just like, screw it. I don't need your, you know, your product. I'll just go somewhere else. And the security guard was, yeah, it didn't go very well. Okay, so... All right, so this, and it goes on for a while. I mean, I need to fast forward here. Otherwise, we're just going to be watching, like, yeah. Uh, it, it, there's nothing. And then, okay, then they start talking. All right, the hood's open, door's open. Okay, now here's the problem. Yeah. You uh, see, okay. the security guard hit him first. Mm -hmm. And then the guy's like, whoa, wait, what? what is happening? You know, the guard, you know, stepped in his way. He's like, I'm leaving. You know, he was dumb. Now, it looks like the wife's in there, the husband's in there. Yeah. We got four security guards and a family. Oh, there, there's more security guards coming. Which, which, by the way, is one of my favorite shows on Primetime Network TV. Four security guards and a family. Yeah, see, that there's, there's a now it's, five. It's, it's on after two men and a dog or whatever they call it. <clears throat> You're not taking our food. Yeah, dude. Wow. Okay, so then we got we got zip ties and all kinds of craziness, don't we? Yeah. Uh, if you go forward a little bit more to those pictures of the injuries that these people suffered, I mean, it's it's sad. And it just get man, that's just gnarly. Okay. All right. So now uh, we got we got them all bound up. We got them tied up, and we got now we got managers on the scene and. Yeah, it's right. I think you went a little too far. Okay, all right. We're back. Uh, no, it's it's down in the first section. I, I did the whole video. Okay. And then, so, you know, go the other way. Mm. Uh, hold on, let me go to my screen and let me pull up the time stamp. All right, that's cool. I should be able to scroll, but I know it's, sometimes it's hard to find. The yeah, so the way YouTube does it sometimes, it's not very uh efficient. it's rolling through all right so i'll tell you what let's do this while you're unless you think you're going to pull that up here shortly um can we keep doing that steve because i want to see their injuries so you search for that all right so all right. that's oh you so got the it injury starts at 310 so 3, 310 all right oh okay oh wow oh man all right, I mean, that is a serious black eye. Yeah. In fact, his yeah. eye, he might even have eye issues after that. It looks like they got the food. Right. Food's delivered. Dude. Man, that's a, that's a serious, that's a serious, yeah, oh, man. Yeah, he may yeah. have lost, he may have lost some vision in this. There's, there's definitely, oh, yeah, there's a, that's a plain, 
like 30 some odd pictures. These were just a handful of them. And I'm just sitting here like, holy crap. I mean, these security guards really did a number on both the husband and the wife. Well, he looks okay there, which is really good. It looks like he can see okay. But a, pl a plaintiff's attorney will go crazy with this. Wow. Wow. Okay, and there he is what, maybe a few days later or something. Yeah. Wow. All right, well, I'm, I'm really glad that he he doesn't look like he lost his vision, and I'm really glad to hear that. That's a crazy story. And that's just, yeah. a, that's just a random event. I mean, there's no... I wonder if he's going to get a dry run fee out of that. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Maybe he can get detention pay. Something. <laughs> Oh, I'm not laughing at him. It's a terrible situation. I'm trying to make it. Is. Well, it's it is a terrible situation. We're left, but we're left with these pieces. We we can't make any sense of the story. We don't have the facts, of course. We don't know what happened, but we do know that it Trump feels dangerous. Well, as people, it feels like there's two things going on here. One, uh, truckers in general, I think, feel like they get taken advantage of regularly by different entities. And two, as people. We feel like there's just there's abuse uh, it, that happens randomly to civilians, and we don't know why it happens. But it seems to usually happen from those that are you know either supposed to be protecting us or just see, there's misunderstandings that, that turn violent. So it's you know it's tough. It really is tough. Good thing it wasn't the DOT. Exactly. That, man, that that right? See. Then the you know then there would have to be another live webcast. Mark, you've been quiet. What's going on, Mark? No, go right ahead. I'm just watching the. Uh, you know, I only heard about it. I didn't watch the the tape or anything of it. Yeah. Well. Well. So you, from from you just watching the video, what is your opinion from hearing about it and now seeing something about it? Well, well I mean, it's just one of those things that happens. It's it just happens to be a truck driver. You know, it's not like this happens all the time. As you see, it's the only video anybody's ever brought up of this for a long time. It's just one of those things. These guys will get fired and sued, and, uh, you know, they'll go on. That's what happens when you get security, and they think they have some power. Oh, that's, it's a, that's a good summation. All right, Mark, listen, man, we're here. The, I got a flag behind me because you have a flag behind you. Sure, you know, it's America. You started this trucking freedom movement, and, and Ty has a wreath. I can if I can figure out how to point down at the screen, uh, which I can't clearly figure that out. We got a wreath down there, so you know that's good. <laughs> and um, so I mean, and here we are. We're on a Friday. We're talking trucking. We're talking business, and we're talking freedom. So you guys uh, hear about Uber Eats? Oh, t okay. Bring it up. What do we got? That did deal with Starbucks. Did you know Starbucks has over thirty places in uh, China? I didn't know that. I didn't know. That. Yeah. So yeah. Uber Eats is joining forces with Starbucks to make sure everybody gets their coffee. Oh, uh, that's good. Uber. Hey, Greg, go get me a cup of coffee. Hold on, I'll call Uber Eats. Uber Eats is actually, it's interesting <laughs> how there's other businesses that have are doing like, isn't there, oh man, there's one I'm trying to think of. Um, drive, DoorDash? Isn't DoorDash? Yeah, there's a lot of them. So I've been an Uber driver for probably four years. So why is Uber Eats able to penetrate the market in a way that these other companies, I mean, I don't know if they have or haven't, but right? doesn't Uber Eats seem to have, that they feel like first to market even though they're not? Am I wrong? They're just bigger. They're just bigger, exactly. It's because of Uber, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, one driver can also do Eats, so they have a lot of drivers, so easy to do and nobody the right. doesn't complain when you take corners too fast and it doesn't throw up on your seats and it doesn't throw up in your seats oh that's interesting well and, and speaking of that we know that uh autonomous vehicles should be doing grocery deliveries here there's a couple companies investing in that have you read those articles yes right i don't know do you know the year on that no. Right. It's probably like February. They're working on it. Right. <clears throat> Plan is to boost the revenue by doubling the footprint in China. 30 cities. 
Already delivering in 36. This is going to sound really dumb, but do the Chinese drink as much coffee as Americans? I don't know. Well, Jay, did you know that Starbucks serves tea? Well, there you go. See? Look at that. And Boom. Scone. <laughs> scones, too. And what? Scones? Do, <laughs> do, They're delicious. I know, but do, do Chinese tea. eat... Do they eat scones in China as much as Americans? Maybe they should. They're pretty good. Some fish in it. Right? Fish they scones. Fish scones. They might start. They're delicious. You, I recommend them. I might get one on the way to work now that we're talking about it. What about a rice scone? Oh, oh they're, be, they're actually, they're, you're probably onto something. Well, and it, I think a month ago, you, Mark, didn't you mention the company that does a lot of deliveries for Starbucks? There was a foods company. I thought they got mentioned because isn't that, that'd be a pretty busy, that's a busy, that's a busy transportation circuit, uh, delivering coffee to Starbucks and supplies, isn't it? I mean, it would seem like it. Yeah. Constantly serving people and just hand over fist money. Is there a more lucrative business than selling coffee at five bucks a cup? It's good. If you ever had it, I, mean, Pasta. I, I like Pasta it. Is a pretty lucrative business. Which one? Pasta. Pasta. That is a good man. You're right. How cheap is it to make pasta? Wow. And I just paid fourteen dollars for a bowl of noodles. Right. You and I mean, I'll pay five bucks for the uh, the fresh pasta. Right. That you just throw and mm. man, that stuff's great. Ravioli. You should sell that at Starbucks. Pasta and coffee. There we go. Hey, and, there, and there's your rice connection. So what's going on in the trucking industry news? This is your guys' show. What's going on? Exactly. Get you uh, some news, man. Hey, what's up? I tuned in. I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of guys talking about rice. Let's see. What, <laughs> Welcome to our rice stone and coffee talk. All right. So hey, we got Serge the car haulers here with us today, hey, and um, let's see here. What am I doing? Okay, let me share this. We got Serge the car haulers with us, and uh, Vinny from Viper Transport. He's checking in too. Um, I pulled up a couple news articles here. I'll tell you what, the, my favorite one that caught my eye, podcast, opportunity for a logistics company and mobility. You know, I think some may argue that YouTube and whatever is whatever. Uh, I'm going to argue the opposite. Did you see what Freight Waves did with a, a new daily show? Like Freight Waves is going live every day now with their, um, they have like, the meet media room in Freight Waves. I, I pulled up, here's FreightWaves.com, okay, which is a, but look, here, here's the new, here's the, they've got a new daily video market update from the Freight Waves HQ. Now, I think that just started, like, a few weeks ago. I could be wrong, I don't have the information on it, but I think so, but either way, Freight, Wave real, Freight Waves realizes that what they can do is, rather than relying on truckers to go find the national weather for themselves, why not incorporate a daily weather segment with daily trends segment, right? And just bring it to the, to the niche channel. Well, then this caught my eye. Here is Auto Remarketing Magazine. I think they're saying the same thing. Auto Remarketing Podcast. This is why I created Auto Transport Intel, and I think St Stefan, you've got a YouTube channel. Mark, you've got a YouTube channel. Some of us realize that this niche media segment could be huge. Now, not everybody's going to succeed, but we know that by doing it now and just keep <clears throat> on doing it and building, our chances improve. And if we can actually add business to it and some advertising then our chances greatly improve right. where I don't think we have to rely on the, you know, established media companies to figure it out for us. I actually don't. Now this could be a great show. I mean, good marketing, you know, friendly podcast about auto remarketing. I'm going to check it out. But Beards. right. But I mean, I know I, what I do is I see, I'll see, um, like, whether it's Sirius XM or um, other websites with, you know, destination uh, resources for different media. 
you know, not all shows are that informative. I'll tell you what, if I tune into a trucking show and I hear random callers talking about politics, I'm out of there. Yeah. And that's the one thing I think with some of the national news organizations, uh, they really push, you know, some of their political views, even when it comes to, you know, trucking. I can see them trying to bring in, you know, different political parties trying to push different agendas instead of just keeping it trucking related, which is where your channel, you know, really stands out with the automotive section because you only pretty much capitalize on the automotive part. Yeah, thanks. I, I mean, I think that's really important to if you're if you're gonna just like just like when they do if people do marketing, um, they don't allow all this other garbage in the message. You want to stay focused, right? Right. And so, like, and I know, like, I, Mark, your show on Mondays when you go live at one o'clock Eastern, noon Central every Monday, you don't want to miss it. There is so much information about. Specific, I mean, truck issues, <clears throat> regulation questions, uh, company questions. It's really focused on trucking answers. I mean, it's a it's a great show. I'm looking into starting a podcast for 2019. I've been looking into it. Great, you should as well. Yeah, adding a podcast. You should. I figured I don't I don't have enough to do now. Right. So I thought I'll just start a podcast too. So I'm looking into that for the new year. And I just saw your, um, you reviewed Blue Parrot headset, and I mean, I thought that was great, man. Good job. That was Instagram. That was just a short Instagram thing. The full uh, video comes out here shortly, to, a little later today. Cool. You're a friend of the channel. Cool. And, and Stefan, I mean, you've got, like, doing that video on the, uh, you know, I realize it's another random crime situation, but it's specific to trucking. Mm. I think it's really cool that you did that video. Yeah, it was one of those things, you know, I used to do OTR, but I deal with food. And when I came across that story, it was just, to me, what the hell was going on through those security guards' minds? It's not like he was hauling a, you know, a nuclear missile. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it, man. I mean, and that's why I'm saying to you is that, you know, um, honestly, uh, I, I have a lot of empathy uh, where I, when I look and as I go throughout the day. And then I and then I have to book a load on Central Dispatch, and I get real cranky and turn into, you know, a monster again. But I go back and forth. But my point is that I don't know how you do a security guard job or to be a emergency uh, personnel or an officer of the law. I think that'd be a really really difficult job. But nonetheless, to um, when we see a news story, to dive into the pieces rather than just get the glazed over version. I think that's great. And I mean, you found the photos of the damage and the, you know, of the injuries. That's awesome. So, man, good job. Thank you. Yeah, man. I mean, not that you need me to tell you good job, but I like that you did that. And I appreciate that. So, yeah, the some of the comments I've been getting on that video have been, you know, quite supportive on the driver's side. And you know, I really do hope that we hear a statement from the company on – you know, their view of what they think of the security guard company. I think we've all, you know, at times we don't appreciate the way we've been either manhandled or dressed or, you know, I mean, we just, it's, we, we find situations where we feel like, you know, maybe it's gone a little bit far. So that's what it seems what happened there. So, um, and I also I want to take this opportunity since we're kind of middle of the show and this is what we, we seem to do. In the middle of the show, we kind of go around and talk whatever, about what everyone's doing. Ty, you said you're having a great day. Now, Ty, you are my business partner in CTS Transport Business Coaching. I mean, that's for car haulers, but I, I think we both know, and that's why Trucking Business Freedom uh, is part of what I'm doing at Auto Transport Intel. I want to talk about everything transportation. <clears throat> but right now, you and I focus on car hauling. But what's going on with you, Ty? Yeah, well, I don't have any videos to our YouTube channel. <laughs> right. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You're with me. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I'm pretty pumped about is to see relationships expand and grow. So Jay and I, we do a lot of coaching. Um, we talk to quite a few people in the course of a week, one-on-one, -on -one, about an hour. And we listen, do a lot of listening, and then we try to figure out which is the best way for this person to go. So 
as we're doing this, we're building relationships with people in different parts of the state. And we're starting to establish, we've been doing it long enough now, Jay. This is really cool. We've been doing it long enough now. We've got some, what I might describe as a key player, a key role, a key man in a particular state that it has taken a coaching lesson, has continued a relationship with us, and it's working. Like, really blows me away. It makes me think, man, I might actually know something. But it, again, it comes back to relationships. So as we're coaching a particular individual that we've had a relationship with for a while in Florida, we're coaching another guy Monday. Jay, you remember who it was anyway. Yeah. Coaching him. And as we're talking and listening, I'm like, this dude is right in our other guy's backyard. Today, no joke, I put the two together, and they're helping each other. That's awesome. <laughs> so then we're doing another one in Pennsylvania, and we're starting to see the same thing. So I get excited about more relationships, business opportunity, handshakes, cards, different things like that, which are actually a part of trucking. It's just maybe at the beginning of the trucking. Well, so. it, that, it, it's, it's a huge part of trucking, as we know. I mean, and really any business has – it's it's essential relationships, business networks, building your contacts, but um, – and especially in trucking because you've got to – you know that um, if you let, – let's say, you know, Mark, Stefan – is Stefan, you know, as a trainer, Mark, you work for a company. So you're not the networker. That's somebody that you work with, right? What are you talking about? In your company, you work with. You drive for a company, right, Mark? Right. It's somebody yeah. you work with that handles making sure, handles the logistics of the drivers, talking to other drivers. Like, you don't necessarily network with other drivers, do you? No. Right, okay. I hardly see any drivers. Exactly. So you're part of the network. And, Stefan, you are, I know you train drivers, so you're actually one rung closer to managing the network, but your 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 trainees are probably assigned to you? Uh, a lot of my trainees actually come from my YouTube channel. Wow, that's but awesome. If doing uh, a Walmart account, I get it. You have a little bit more of an in-touch feel on the loads that are coming out, and so unlike OTR, where you just kind of take what you're, you know, given, you actually have a way to plan yourself out along with other drivers and kind of get what you need or want to make the check you need. So it's a little bit different. Okay. All right. And so sure. it's, it's cool you said that you get contacts from your YouTube channel. Yes, I do. Uh, I have a waiting list. And yeah. to me, that, that's surprisingly, that, that that was different. And we now have a waiting list because of the leads coming in through Auto Transport Intel. CTS Transport Business Coaching is servicing those leads. And, I mean, that's what we're talking. So building a network and using social media, it's amazing what it accomplishes. And I guess that explains sure. why every company you interact with has Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those little logos at the bottom LinkedIn. of the webpage. Which one? LinkedIn. 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 Exactly. You know, I was talking about, uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday about the, the most important social media in my life for my business and me personally. And it is, yeah, LinkedIn has, has gone up and Twitter has gone down. Yeah. You guys find that? Uh, I find that LinkedIn is very good. Uh, unfortunately, I don't use it as much as I should. But I find that uh, the presence you have on YouTube and Facebook can actually take you quite far. Facebook's huge. You know, it is. People, whether you want to like it, it's kind of like Starbucks coffee. You may not want to like it, but it's pretty good. <laughs> That's how. I think that's how Facebook marketing is. It works, man. <laughs> it does. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, wheel Zuckerberg in front of Congress every couple months. That's good and all, but I'm, you know, I'm on Facebook while he's talking. I, I he, like it when they put him in a booster seat. And, and he yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. 
He, I think he, well, I'm not saying he likes it, but I don't, I, w- I was reading, actually, I don't think he cares. I mean, no. it doesn't matter. Hey, Jay, so here's the thing. As, a, as these are all coming together, it's really cool, but I'm starting to remember some things. Like, yeah. the guy who's doing the job, it doesn't matter what, if he's the guy that owns it, right, he's doing it. He can only do so much. And so it's having somebody like a coach or a mentor, whatever you want to call it. Hey, I can tell you're really swamped here. Have you thought about doing this? Oh, no, I haven't. I'm too swamped over here to even think about doing it a different way. So that's where I see a lot of value in what you and I are doing because of our experience of 20, 30 years combined in messing with cars. Well, and I, I think it's applicable to any, I think it's applicable to uh, anybody. Well, it is. Everybody here is helping other people through communications, through social media, and providing advice. And we're, we're, we're monetizing because we're spending an hour at a time coaching and they i mean you have to monetize that but there's a there's i a, give all that away for free well i don't charge any driver anything they email me for nothing i've talked to people all along i'm gonna get sponsors to the channel so this? that everything i can get to the drivers is no charge and and, and i I, and I don't recruit for my company i don't take money that way i don't tell them where it is i don't take the recruiting money nothing all the information so far to the drivers is no charge no matter how many emails some people have emailed 30 times no charge kudos to you and listen shaggy's is doing it too and if i could <laughs> let that go to voicemail if i could <laughs> i would do everything for free but unfortunately i'm about as broke as i can get i really i just have to charge for my time in some ways i have to yeah i'm not a church i gotta make money I mean, I just have to do, listen, I would give, and I, and I do this, this show is free. My videos are free. My blog posts are free. I've given away as much free as I literally can. But see, here's the thing that I, I, I think we when, have to charge something. We have we're to. talking about billing people. It's, it's not that it's an expense to them. It's actually an asset because I guarantee you all four of us know something that you should not do that will end up costing you more than a hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. A couple Amen. hundred bucks. So if this Stefan here, he's teaching people, hey, you don't, when you turn right, you want to make sure you swing wide because what's going to happen is you're probably going to take the trailer tires off and somebody's going to be mad. You're going to lose your job, whatever it is. That's, hey, man, a lifetime of trucking, that's a couple million dollars at least, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, you're not going to be driving if you keep doing that. That's worth, that has value. Well, let's actually talk about, you know, value. Uh, has anyone been watching that the uh, company's being sued? And one company got hit with 15 something million dollars for not paying minimum wage when a driver is sleeping. I, get, I did several uh, videos on that. They actually had to pay for 16 hours a day. Yeah. And that was only a state lawsuit. It will be, uh, it's not, it doesn't hold any water at the moment. They're going, it's Pam, right, which is a crap company as it is. And they're going to, that will be thrown out at the federal level when it goes to that because transportation, the lawsuit doesn't have any merit at the moment. It was just a judge's opinion. It isn't really even a, uh, it's not a final say in it at all. I want to say that. Not going anywhere. Hey, Mark, you got a great comment. I'm telling you, what you're doing is working. I think what we're all doing is working. It's just that it's different in different ways. Um, let's see. Angie says, absolutely, Mark. We love you, and you have helped me and my husband so much. Just got a local job with Air Gas or Penske. Just need to decide now. So they got two offers. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks, Angie. I appreciate that. And we've been uh, emailing back and forth. That is, I mean, and that is great. That's the thing. I'll tell you what, Mark. I'll tell you, here's a big difference. You have a stable job. I don't. I used to. I don't. Well, That's why I, remember- I started this channel, actually. I started this channel the same month that I lost a stable job that actually didn't even pay very well in, in the begin with. But Look, um, I remember starting out driving. You may not have any money. You could be broke, and but you still need information. So if I can change somebody who's starting out, a dime a mile 
that's 10 grand difference in their first year. Absolutely. That's oh, yeah. what, you know, some people need information, but may not have the money. And later, right, when it comes back around, people may send money or do whatever, and I'll be able to get sponsors yeah. to support the channel that way. There's people that just don't, that need the information, but don't have the money. And I can change yeah. somebody's life. What, 10 grand in your first year? That's a huge amount of money. That can change your life. So that kind of thing, the life-changing part of it, that's worth more than money. Come on. Well, and, yeah. at, and at the same time, well, and there's different ways to monetize things, whether it's through a sponsor or actually charging for a product or service. I'll tell you this, because of uh, two of the last coachings that paid, that's what paid for me to buy the Zoom so we didn't get this meeting cut off halfway through. So, I mean, you know, the, any money I get goes right back into the show. This is literally my entire focus and passion. I mean, this is all I work on every single day. So, you know, the thing is that we, we all know that. It's, and that's why I'm glad we're talking about this, is that whatever we have to do to continue in our journey to move forward in our passion and business is what we got to do. Mm -hmm. And we get our, I mean, oh my gosh, how much information I've gotten off of YouTube. That's why I believe in YouTube. Most of the good information I've gotten about building my channel has come from YouTube. There's, there's a lot of information out there on YouTube. And I find that using Google or going to YouTube, you could actually learn a lot about any subject at this point in time. It's a great place to, you know, make a decision, you know, to go A or B and hopefully make the right decision. Yeah, and then, and then, not not just YouTube, right? But Facebook, right? How much information do you get off of Facebook? I mean, it's a lot. Most of the news that I get is off of Facebook. Now, one can argue, oh, well, no wonder you're so messed up. Okay, fine. Then I'm not talking about the source, but I'm talking about the information. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to then pursue the news story to find out the unbiased version, but at least now you know about the story. And who, I mean, the weather isn't biased, is it? They don't say it's snowing in Minnesota just because they prefer the Miami Dolphins. I mean, the weather is the weather. Who cares where you get it? Which is why Freight Waves, again, I think is capitalizing on daily information, sharing the news. You should, you guys should check it out. I don't know exactly where you go to, to get Freight Waves daily market HQ. I don't know. Freightwaves.com, I guess. I'll check it out in the podcast app that I have. I follow them on Twitter. I haven't seen them say anything about it. So we'll check it out. And, and I'm also drawing attention. To, I think there's going to be more and more uh, media and podcasts and channels and it's I mean there's already several I think mm -hmm. if, if you look in the rearview mirror at some of the truckers that have been sitting in their cab for several years making videos I think they're looking around going wow there's a lot more guys now than there used to be in fact I'm sure somebody looks at me and goes where'd he come from what is he doing he's not even in a truck <laughs> Do you know where the tie downs are, Jay? <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, what does this guy even know? <laughs> Jay, do you know how to load a car? <laughs> exactly. No, I have never loaded a car. There I said it. Actually, I say it all the time. Uh, but what I have done a lot of is stared at load boards and talked to brokers. I think I've done that more than some drivers. Um, it's, it's just that, I mean, I've called so many law, I've been, I, and, and I end up banging my head against the wall. That's why I rail against central dispatch fairly or unfairly. Um, now that I know about DAT and internet truck stop, those are real load boards. That's a, th that's incredible information. Um, that's where you can really just get upset with the rates or the volume because you actually have the information. Central Dispatch, there's no volume information. I mean, you can interpret it, but it it is there. They just don't, they don't, you know, they're not worried about you analyze. It'd be like if the stock market just kind of threw out a bunch of dollars. Yeah, Kraft and, you know, a Starbucks and some bread and we got some oranges and maybe there's a dollar. That's, that would be, you know, 
the auto transport load board stock market update. But no, that's not what you get. In a, in a professional situation, you get a ticker and you know if something went up or down and all that. And that, I think that's what DAT and Internet Truck Stop are trying to be is, I mean, there's graphs and trends and information and there's actually things you can do to contact people. Am I wrong about that? Well, Mark, you don't look at the load boards, right? No. Exactly. Stefan, you don't either. You don't look at the load boards either? Uh, not load boards, no. Right, okay. What, 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 okay, so where do you guys look to keep up? I talked about some sources. Um, and I even pulled up, like, you know, I talked about freight waves. Uh, I look at transport topics. I look at LinkedIn. Where do you guys get your trucking news? Transport parking lot, Jay. Transport parking lot. The counter at the truck stop from other drivers. That's the best source. They know everything. Just ask them. People. People. Yeah, I get it from other people as well. You know, I, I just go to the counter at the truck stop. Ooh, nobody said app or so, website. So, so no, what? all those guys sitting around the counter at the truck stop, that's the best information right there. Oh, so, man. all right, who's going to make the YouTube channel called Truck Stop Counter? You. Right? That's right. See, that's the thing. I may not be in a truck strapping down and unstrapping, but I do love media and I now that I now that I'm in this niche and I know about this niche and I love this niche, that is my goal is to help grow media in this niche. And if I if I man, if somebody wants to give me 100k and we build truck stop counter the show, let's do that. I'm in. That would be awesome. We'll set up some GoPros and we'll talk to the cashier. You know, we'll put a mic on the cashier and a camera on the cashier, right? And then we'll have a camera at the door. So we'll have the guy standing outside. We'll have the camera at the fuel. We'll have Fuel Island News, right? All right. We'll have to bleep out all the guys that uh, go to the bathroom out on the Fuel Island. So That's we'll right. have to pop that out. That's right. So we got a guy at the Fuel Island. We have the guy at the car wash. We have the cashier, and then we'll have the snack counter, your snack counter update. And then, you know, and then ever so often we hear what shower, who's up next for the shower. Jerky Link sponsor. Let's talk oh to him. My gosh, think of the sponsors. Email Jerky Links immediately. Oh my gosh, totally. And I love beef jerky. I will do live segments. I will do live testimonials of beef jerky from the Fuel Island. Hey. You know what? It, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever been down in Texas. You've been to a Bucky's, okay? Bucky's. But yeah. if you get to a Bucky's, they literally have a like deli counter just full of beef jerky, and it's freaking awesome. I love going to a Bucky's. The only downside is I can't take my eighteen wheeler there, but they have no sign saying I can't take a ten wheeler there. So I've got my trailer and Bob Dylan. No, I'm, I'm in, it goes I'm right in. back to Uber Eats. Have Uber Eats bring it right to you. True that. True hey, that. speaking of, okay, I got a news story. I got a guy that contacted. I need to Facebook this, so this is a sneak preview. This is breaking news. Okay, so I talked to a guy who's at the port in Oakland waiting for Tesla cars. Okay, he's there. Uh, he's been there so long. All right, what are we talking about? Okay. This happens, we know this happens, no matter what you're hauling or where you're going, you end up with a bottleneck, okay? So here's the bottleneck. Tesla makes cars, right? The Tesla electric vehicles. Heard of them. Okay, exactly. All right, they're one of the manufacturers of electric cars. All right, and they would probably argue the best one, right? Because Tesla, I think Tesla is one of those brands where you have an opinion, you know? I, if I say Popeye's chicken, maybe a couple guys in the back go, oh, I love Popeye's, and everybody else is like, I don't know, KFC, whatever. But Tesla is one of those companies where it seems like most people have an opinion. And usually it's it's either, oh, I love that brand, or I can't stand those guys. Whatever it is, yeah. all right? I think Tesla is going down the road of, of Apple phones, though. They don't like you repairing their own vehicle. They, they think that you have to take their vehicle to their dealership for everything. Which is kind of me personally. I I think they need to. I think Mark. I don't know Mark. Uh, it's, yeah. What's his name? I think he needs to change that. Well, Elon Musk, I think, has some 
Uh, he has some bad press around him right now. And whether he created that, I, I don't A know. Little. I, it seems like he did. All right, so there's where we're at. Tesla. Okay. Well, in, oh, in California, in Fremont, California, is apparently where there's a Tesla plant. Now, I don't know if they're being shipped in from another location. I think they're being made in Fremont. I say I think because I can't find any news stories. Why not? I don't know. But, and, and, and someone's going to say, oh, I found a news story, and they're going to email it to me, and we're all going to high five. All right. So, Fremont, California, but here's what's going on. The car haulers are being sent to the port in Oakland, which is not far from Fremont, to pick up Tesla cars and deliver them to the rest of the country. Now, the uh, broker carrier that is, I guess, a main source of the contract for Tesla is RPM. RPM is based in Michigan. Anything I say is information that I think I have, so if I get it wrong, please let me know. You can comment below or live chat. And feel free to like. Um, and so, and share, and comment, and subscribe. So, um, P RPM has contacted carriers en masse. Get de just deadhead to the port of Oakland. Everybody's going to, you know, get loaded up. We need Tesla cars moved because Tesla, I guess, told RPM, put out the word. We have a, we, we really need this to happen. All right. So, all these car haulers on behalf of RPM went to the port of Oakland to get loaded. They had appointments, etc. Well, there's a bottleneck now. There's not enough cars to load, and carriers are sitting there for several days waiting to get loaded. Ty. Forget that they're telling these guys to go out there for twelve thousand dollars for a load. Yes. It went from twelve thousand. Hey, go get the load. Twelve grand went from 12 to 15. I mean, these guys are telling people to drive empty all the way to California for a $15,000 load coming back to you don't know where. And they're not giving these guys any information what you're getting, vans, cars, nothing, nothing. Just go. Okay, now no. I'm taking I have a friend who does uh, auto uh, transport and almost the same thing happened over in Oakland happened on the east side of the country because everybody went to Oakland. So it actually had the reverse. A friend of mine went out east and he was getting ten to twelve thousand for his eight car hauler. And he was hauling, you know, it was like fifteen hundred mile round round trip, he was telling me, and he was just going empty because everybody was out in Oakland like you guys were just saying. You know, I have a, several people I keep in contact on Facebook. And that's another really good place to keep, you know, uh, ear to the gravestone to know what's going on. Well, so here we are, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share a picture. Actually, I have a picture. This guy sent me a picture of empty car haulers just sitting around, lots of. Them. Oh wow! Yeah, um, he took a really good photo. So let's see here. Where is that? Um, and, and, and they, some of these guys are sitting there for three to five days on average. He said, personally, he's losing, he's losing a good, uh, $1,500, $2,000 a day sitting there. And it's gotten to the point. Can you guys see this picture? Yeah. yeah. It's gotten to the point where like, there's not even, you know, he's on a driving team. There's only one bed in the truck. So now people are starting to have to get hotels Look, there's no restaurants. There's nowhere to eat. There's no toilet paper in the bathrooms anymore. It's, it's turned into a mess. I mean, it's just, you know, he's the living conditions, it's tough. Unless you, you know, unless you get an Uber or a Lyft, and there's your Uber Eats again. Unless you Uber Eats, bring your toilet paper. Yeah, I mean, you bring me, I need a coffee, I need toilet paper, and I need some rice cakes on the double, you know? It's, I mean, that's a lot of empty car haulers sitting around. Wow. At some point, you have to cut your losses and move. What? You know, if you're an operator, you know, roll out. So I want to say this, too, is that the, the, the good news is that he said that RPM is actually being really communicative and helpful to him and the other drivers to try to, you know, let them know what's going on. You know, okay, maybe you're two days away. But he's he wants – he wanted – us to know that RPM 
he feels like RPM is doing the best they can. So it really sounds like the real bottleneck here is Tesla. And that he doesn't, you know, you don't get, there's nobody at Tesla to talk to or, you know, whatever. But the new story is, what is going on with Tesla? We don't know. And uh, and it just, you know, and you read news stories about Tesla. Yeah, I mean, Elon Musk, I guess, if somebody could say, hey, Elon, we need to take, we need to just take a step back. We need to step back from the that the boring community project, all these empty car haulers. You say you want to start a new car hauler company or whatever it is, you know, and then he got some bad press from the remember that was that mining catastrophe overseas several months ago. Sometimes you know, the crazy part though that I feel about this is I, and I've got a terrible problem with conspiracy theory. Right. But me too. Over the years, you know, if, you, if you've got a struggling company, which I've heard in the past that the guys always had a hard time keeping up with production. I don't know if that's true or not. But whether you have a production problem or you don't, if you make news that's going to hit the 6 and 7 o'clock news and hit Fox News all day on the repeat, man, that should do something maybe to get your name out there more. So I'm wondering, did he guy did he – did he ever really have any production problems to begin with? And this is all conspiracy to boost the name? Maybe Potentially. That. Good press, bad press, it's all the same. Yeah. That's what I mean. These I mean, these guys are smart and they got a lot of money. So I'm wondering, is there really a problem? And well, who cares about truck drivers anyway? They'll be fine. I'll say this. We do get reminded from time to time that Wag the Dog and other misinformation campaigns to make us look elsewhere that's real yeah and I that's mean, that kind is of what real. i've been wondering about this you know i mean it really works out good if you're elon musk or tesla because who's the bad guy in this story nobody's saying elon's a bad guy or tesla's a bad guy it's rpm and all the drivers drivers being babies hey we told them to come up their cars chill out right you know well, we've been chilling out for five days. So, I mean, I don't know. It, to me, it, it seems like, and of course, Jay and I, were in cars, so we keep up with this stuff. But why does the guy buy a transport company? Well, and this is weird. The guy said they pick up those car haulers we saw. Those are at the port of Oakland. But the cars aren't at the port of Oakland. The cars are in Fremont down the road. So they got to wait. For, and I think this is where the Tesla car hauling company comes in, which I think is LNR, but, you know. Um, they they got to bring the cars to the port so the car haulers can load up. Well, wh wh why can't the car haulers just go to where the cars are in Fremont? Makes no sense. I don't get it. I don't get it. But that's the that's the story. That's the rumor. And I mean, I just, that picture's from, that picture was, I think that picture was taken a couple days ago. I got it today. I talked to the guy today. I don't know, man. Well, and then they've apparently had a problem with, I don't know what it is, but they've lost a lot of their loads in fire. Have you heard that? Well, <laughs> okay, what was it you said? The Tesla batteries. What did well, you? I don't know. You said I something. Heard, what I heard, the picture that you just saw, right. okay, I didn't, know what, I didn't know you had this picture, but I'm talking right. to a guy. He's describing this picture you just presented. There's 100 trucks all parked here. Everybody's waiting on a load. Nobody gets it. One or two trucks somehow got a load, and they're pulling out. They get about 50 or 100 miles down the road. I don't know how far they made it. One guy runs into the back of the other guy, supposedly, and there goes 18 Teslas down the drain. <laughs> then I think, and I don't know if this is true or not, but there's in Kansas City, Missouri, a 435 highway shut down because there's an LNR truck on fire with Teslas. Again, I'm, I didn't read the press. I wasn't there. I don't know. But it does seem like fire seems to be a reoccurring thing for Tesla. Did anybody get charged with anything? Ha! Huh. Charged. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, Mark, if there is a cheesy pun master, it is you. <laughs> I'm positive of that. <laughs> positive. Man, I mean, it's real. 
<laughs> oh shoot well i tell you what our we're, our hour is almost up unlike so on auto transport intel i i, I go forever all right um mm -hmm. but on trucking business freedom we keep it to an hour just like they do on television so um mark we what what do you want to say what what's going on i don't know what, what's what's happening next before we meet again in a month well the crap company of the year voting starts next week mm. So that's going to be super exciting. They're going to get a trophy, and, uh, and and it's going to be engraved with the name of the company. It's going to be great. And everybody should go get their tickets for the Mid-America Truck Show, of course. Thank you. That's right. I meant to say that, too. Um, let's just do that, say that real quick. Mid-America Truck Show, you got to go. You can now get your uh, – you can now register. Go to Truck. I already show. did. You already did. Truckingshow.com. And there's let's, the button right there. Register. There it is. Click the register button and you can enter your information. It's free registration and everybody should go. Everybody. I mean, if I'll you, be there Friday and Saturday, come on out. If you give any hoot about any trucking anywhere, anytime at all, you should go to the show. It's unbelievable. Come and see me. I'll be live. And I have loves gift cards in my pocket to give away. Wow. That's awesome, man. Dude, you are you are on the sponsorship. I love that, man. No, nope, that those are from me. I'm oh, not sponsored from by Love. I'm buying them and giving them away. That's how I do with the Love's gift cards. Mark, so. you nah. man, you give and give. It's unbelievable. I mean, no I want to I want to help people. I like Love's anyway, and so I'm giving away some Love gift cards. Walking around, saying hi to everybody. It's going to be a great day, and I'm going to go booth to booth to the recruiting section live and ask them questions so people that can't be there can ask right through me right to the recruiters and we'll get an answer immediately to everybody it's going to be great yeah the uh loves coffee is a lot better than ta come um, and see me get your loves gift card and i love their beef jerky <laughs> so yeah all right Stefan, what's what's going on so you've got a new you got the story today of the security guard what's going on with you before uh I don't know when we'll talk to you next, but man, is I'm so glad. Thank you for joining the show last minute, oh, by the way. I talked to I talked to Stefan last night. And um, you know, Kenny Long was supposed to be here today. He said that uh he wished he could. He had a trucking thing come up. And you guys know, I mean that that happens. So you that you gotta drop everything for the truck. Yeah, it, it does. Uh coming next year, I'm actually gonna be working on uh you know, trying to show people how to increase their monthly income uh, through trucking and also other avenues. Uh, with the automation quickly coming, you know, uh, there's a lot of innovation that's going to start. People have to, you know, start planning and thinking ahead. Agreed. It, it reminds me of when, um, you know, they were closing, like, some of the shipbuilding docks and the people that they could retrain could move into – the next form of technology for that company, but not everybody could be retrained. It's a scary time. So the more information, the better. It's kind of like sure. ELD. I saw a thing on Facebook. A guy was like, hey, I showed up at a DOT inspection. I didn't have the manual to my ELD. They hit me with these fines. How unfair is that? And all the comments were, well, dude, what? You didn't, what, have you been asleep? I mean, we've all known ELD's coming. It's been enforced for a year. And I felt bad for the guy. I mean, he just, he truly didn't know. It's just a shame that he didn't. Yeah, the the whole thing with the ELDs, a lot of people say you can't make any money on it. You can. You just have to be very time conscious and manage your pick up your drop offs and, you know, be smart about your time. True. All right, Ty, you're chomping at the bit. What's going on with CTS? CTS is taking off. It's uh, been fun learning. And two, here's what I was going to say. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I got to meet Stefan and Mark. Mark, I've heard a lot about you and appreciate you. And oh, thank you. To meet you. It's going to be fun. And then I want to thank Jay for his work, your work. Uh, I think you guys are really doing a good job. I'm excited. So more than anything, uh, I would close with I'm glad I get to meet new people, new friends, and I'm sure our paths will cross again. And thank you, Jay. Hey, yep. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I love doing the show. I love seeing, um, you know, I met you guys because of your media, right? That's why we met. Um, and so, I mean, the, the networking grows, everything grows. Man, it's great. 
And I and and Mark, I thank you for co-hosting Trucking Business Freedom with me. Um, and well, thank you um, for inviting me here onto it. It's just been great. This is great. So we'll do the next one in mid January. Um, I'm going to be in Massachusetts the third week of January for a few days. I'm going to do a live show from Massachusetts. But before I go, we will do episode four of Trucking Business Freedom. And I just I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, like, share, subscribe. And if you um, if you have a comment, you're watching this on demand and you're not it's not live, please leave a comment. We love to get comments. And if you leave a comment, I will ask uh, one of the co-hosts here to you know respond to your question. We want to get your questions answered. Visit uh, Trucking Answers on Mondays live at 1 o'clock Eastern every Monday. You can visit ctsbusinesscoaching.com and talk to Ty. And uh, you can go to Stefan Hartz, uh, just as spelled as the name, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-H-A-R-Z on YouTube. And he's always training somebody. So, listen, we want to thank yeah. you guys for tuning in, joining us today. I really appreciate it. And I'm just going to end the show right here, okay? Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. See you, yep. All right. Bye. See you. Bye.